Hey guys, so this episode was recorded before the world lost its damn mind. Yeah, so there may be a mention of me being in Boston, of Clayton being in Kansas City. Well, as I'm sure you can imagine, that didn't happen. But we wanted to leave things unedited for you because, you know, sometimes we're funny and I don't want to delete anything that you guys might laugh at. So be prepared to be entertained of tales of the paranormal and stuff and things. And uh, hey, at least there's no mention of the Iris Bay. Get it? Pig Latin? Yeah. Sit back, chillax, and listen up, bitches. So I was just outside, and I heard a scream in the woods. (laughs) Sound like a little girl. Which direction? That way. Yikes. Yikes. And then Chris's car made a weird noise. His car made a weird noise. Like the sound when you're like about to start it. It just kind of, it kind of whined, you know, the like stuff's moving yeah. around inside. So I don't know what that was. Hmm. All these files. All things creepy. Cryptic. Otherworldly. But we're Oddity Files, the, the podcast. podcast. I'm Clayton Abbott. And I'm Kitsy Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> One of these times, I'll get that straight. I was so close. Um, but we're a paranormal podcast where we talk about creepy shit we find on the internet. Not always creepy. No, just paranormal things yeah. that you can't explain. Paranormal means not normal. So yes. it's my favorite because yeah. I am not normal. Yeah. I am paranormal. Um, yeah, so... Weird shit going on outside my house, but funny story Chris was telling me last night when we were out of town in Virginia. Mm-hmm. He walked out into the front yard. It was night and things were super quiet around here because yeah. one, I wasn't here and I'm a fucking loud mouth. <laughs> and two, just because it's a little creepier when you're in my house by yourself. Yes. It's a big house. And he walked out into the front yard and saw some deer and then heard this high pitched scream. But it was the deer screaming at him. What? He didn't know what it was at first. And he's like, God damn it. She's going to be so pissed if Sasquatch shows up in our yard and she's not home. <laughs> Deer scream? I had no idea. I knew they like kind of moan a little bit. Yeah. You know, almost sounds like a cow. Well, maybe that's what it was. And it was just, you know, intensified because <laughs> he was alone by himself. But I thought that was very interesting. I've never had deer in my yard scream at me. That's hilarious. It's, I wish I could have seen it. And How of course, pissed it was, would you have been? So pissed. I said, you you better have got that motherfucker in front of the ring camera. No kidding. <laughs> it's right when the internet would go out. Literally. Always. Um, yeah. But so no, Sasquatch hasn't come to my house yet. Just in case anybody needed an update on that. <laughs> it's just deers that scream. Um, so, guys, thank you for listening. Yes. Thank you. Somehow, some, for some reason, our listenership is like way up i don't know how that happened you and i've just been like what do we do yeah we've just kind of been letting it happen <laughs> yeah yeah but i think it's because of y'all that are listening right yes, now and it absolutely you guys is. spreading the word you guys are the best you you share everywhere you you post on our on our groups you comment on our posts like and that's honestly what brings stuff to the top like exactly. anytime a, there's interaction on a post that's what brings it to the top and more people see it and so it's all you guys. Yep, it absolutely is. And uh, speaking of that, we need you guys to rate, review, and subscribe. Yes, please. On any app that lets you do it. Yep. And um, I'm actually subscribed to our podcast on several apps. But we do have a contest going on. Yes, we Tell do. Tell them about the contest, Clayton. Yeah, so for the entire month of March, if you rate or review the podcast on Apple Music or wherever you're able to review, or we actually have a TV show as well. Get into that in a second. But if you review on Amazon Prime or IMDb, anywhere that you're able to review that, uh, and then just take a screenshot of it and send that screenshot to oddityfilescrew at gmail.com, we are going to do a drawing and just send you some Oddity File stuff. Absolutely. I have someone had done that, actually. Um, It's Kat Pratt. She sent a review to Amazon Prime. For season three. Okay. And she screen grabbed it and sent it to Oddity Files crew Perfect. at Gmail. So Kat's review on Amazon Prime is five stars. 
Love Thank her you. for that. I stumbled upon this show one late night when I couldn't sleep, and man, am I glad I did. This show is amazing. I've always enjoyed paranormal TV shows, and this is, show is phenomenal, in all caps, just saying. I love how down-to-earth Kitsy, Clay, and Carter are, and just how much they love what they do. Seriously, if you like anything paranormal, you've got to go watch this, and also their podcast, Oddity Files. Seriously, a great group of people and great content. Kat, that's amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much. You are going in the drawing. We're a little different than the other guys. Yep. We don't go in screaming and yelling at the spirits. We literally tell them we're out of, we're there out of love, light, peace, and positivity. And they come back nine times out of ten. They come back at yeah. us with love, light, peace, and positivity. The spirits that need to be fixed, and then they follow me home and want me to fix it for yeah. them. And if I ever figure out how to do that, <laughs> I'll let you know, and then you can follow me home. Uh, I did a little tarot card reading for myself this morning oh. and it was all good news awesome now that retrogrades over and it's no longer friday the 13th and all that all the good vibes all the love we are actually in different cities right now it doesn't sound like yeah. it but we are um so if you are at planet comic-con in kansas city stop by and say hey to clayton yes please if he looks busy just do it later <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're in boston come say hi to me I will be spending my weekend with Mr. Chris Evans, and there are worse things in life. Yeah, at so, Ace Comic Con. Yes, and I got to ask him if he's got paranormal stories. Well, I guess, do you have the paranormal in the news about he's like the front runner in the new Paran or the Bermuda Triangle film? I do not. Yeah. I do not. Yeah, so that's pretty exciting. Um, you had Chris Evans with some paranormal stuff and things. And yeah. I mean, most people are down for that. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely check that out. It was like, God, who was the, the director for that? Somebody it was famous. Sam Raimi. That's right. And then they switched it yes. out. I wish it would have been Sam Raimi. I love him. Well, he is directing the new Doctor Strange. So that's for sure still going on. Yes. Yeah. Benedict. Now I am one degree of, se well, I have been because of all the Avengers we work with, but one degree of separation away from Benedict Cumberbatch, who will always be my Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that was, that's some paranormal in the news right yeah. there. I do have uh, something small. Okay. Um, Carroll County Park District sponsors a Bigfoot program. This is out in Ohio. Oh. So Carrollton, four people will be t talking about their experiences and adventures, tracking and studying Bigfoot at a program at 3 p.m. Oh, this already happened. Um, so it was back in <laughs> January at an elementary school, Whoa. which is really cool. They had this featured speaker, Amy Bu, co-founder of Project Zoo Book and a member of the Olympic Project Bigfoot Research Team. Speaking of elementary schools, we need to get out and talk to the kids some more like we did. Was that last year or the year before? Yeah, that was last year. I just... I just think kids need to be told it's not scary. And if you see yeah. something, it's okay to talk about it. I wonder it. if there's like, I feel like that's good for like middle school age. Yeah, for sure. Like elementary, you it's, it is just, it can be scary, especially even if you're saying it's not scary, like yeah, especially, it can be scary. Yeah. And then you put ideas into their head exactly. at that age as well, which they're going back to home and saying, well, mom, I think I saw a ghost. And they're yeah. like, what are you teaching our kids? So yeah, that would not end well. Speaking of ghosty stuff i know you know this but the listeners may not when we were at galaxy con richmond i had a full-on co paranormal conversation with mr william shatner oh yes and he told me that his life goal is to see something paranormal and grilled me <laughs> same bill investigations same he, so we were talking a little bit and and he's like so you go to these places how do you know they're not projecting what you're seeing because uh, i told him about my experience with yeah. the fairy plantation girl the first time i was there and i wanted to look at him and go oh honey these places can't afford that no <laughs> absolutely not some of them don't have power no it's very very true and then i explained to him what i saw at bobby mackey's he's like now are you sure there wasn't a projector i'm like trust me he's like and what is bobby mackey's I'm like a honky tonk yeah and he, he was just completely intrigued. And I said, you it's know true. what, Bill? Let's too. go ghost hunting. Yeah, we should. <laughs> totally. Guys, 
I'm pretty excited to tell you about this new product I'm using. Soul Drops are sacred plant supplements that boost overall wellness by enhancing your mind, body, and spirit. See what I did there? Made with traditional healing plants, this special microdosing option empowers self-healing and performance optimization. Soul Drops allow you to power up physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Again, see what I did there? With only a few drops per day, Soul Drops can empower your self-healing and optimization. Now, I'm not kidding. I found Soul Drops on a social media ad, and guys, I'm shocked at the results. I'm not even kidding. I'm not making this up. I am shocked at the results. My moods have leveled out, and I'm sleeping better. So Soul Drops is brought to you by renowned shamanic healer and herbalist Vlada Talan. She uses an ancient process to offer all natural, legal, and safe microdosing. Her master plant formulas have transformed the lives of thousands of people, including me. So I figured out a way to get you guys Soul Drops at a 10% discount. Are you ready? Head on over to souldrops.net and type in oddity files one word in the discount code box. I got the Master Trinity set, and I tell you what, this stuff works. So head on over to souldrops.net and remember to type oddity files, again, one word, into the coupon code to get your 10% off. And you know what? You can just thank me later. I've got stories. Yes, How about you? We're I running do. a little ahead of time. so That's okay. I'll do my long one. Okay, perfect. And it is my turn, right? No, it's your turn. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I did not. <clears throat> I was mean like, to. oh my gosh, did I forget that fast? <laughs> I did. <laughs> not you. So, this is a very different story than I've ever done before. Ooh, I'm down for this. Some people throughout history seem to just draw to themselves mystery and, you know, whatever trauma to become larger than life and remain just a, an image, you know. Okay. The mysterious woman known as Nina Kulagina began her strange life when she was born in 1926 in St. Petersburg, Russia. Have you ever heard of her? No. Okay. At, at age just 14 years old, she found herself enlisted in a tank regiment fighting the Nazis in World War II. You go, girl. The most Russian thing I've ever heard in my Yes, life. absolutely. It was to be a very grim chapter in her life. So during what she endured numerous hardships of war and violence before an injury that ended her military career. Kulagina would go on to get married, settle down, and have children. But it was during this quiet time of her life that things would begin to get strange. Okay. And she would launch herself into one of the most legendary cases of powerful psychic individuals. Ooh, I am down. It began one day when she realized that on occasion, objects in her house would move when she was angry, sometimes quite dramatically. It was not just a little frightening as it sometimes, or as she first expected, that her home might be haunted. So at first, like, she wasn't putting two and two together. Okay. So she thought, like, poltergeist shit. Yeah. But then the link between her anger and the phenomena was just undeniable. She had vague memories of her own mother possessing the ability to move things with her mind. Oh, okay. So confused, she tried to focus her concentration, but at first was unable to control what appeared to be some might call psychokinesis. Okay. Or the ability to move objects. With practice, she found that she slowly gained the ability to move objects at will, starting with small light objects like a strip of paper, cigarettes, matchsticks, and gradually move on to heavier, more substantial objects. Oh, wow. As her powers grew, she allegedly started to manifest other abilities as well. She found that she could do things such as see what was inside people's pockets, see colors with her eyes closed merely by touching the item. What? And, and even by her accounts, healing people or generating electromagnetic energy from her body. She mostly kept these extraordinary powers to herself, but after suffering mental problems, she was sent to a hospital for observation where she was seen by staff to display some of her abilities. And this is when word just started to get out like crazy okay attracting interest from parapsychologists around russia one of the first to come and test nina's ability was soviet scientist edward naumov who quickly affirmed her psychokinetic abilities oh, really yes when he spread out some matches in front of her just in an impromptu experiment just like okay if you can do it do it like yeah 
you know, kind of surprised her with it. And she promptly moved them with her mind from one edge of the table to the next and onto the floor. She's the coolest person ever. After this, she was supposedly intensely studied by Soviet scientists in numerous experiments under controlled conditions. And the extent of her abilities became truly clear and, I mean, just undeniable. One of the most widely tested of Nina's powers was that of psychokinesis. And she was consistently able to baffle everyone present during the demonstrations. You know, you'd think they'd focus on her healing abilities, but go ahead. (laughs) Even under the most strict laboratory conditions. Among the many experiments carried out, some truly just stood out as bizarre. So in one test, she was seen as able to move objects that were completely sealed in a plexiglass container and even to remove a marked matchstick from a pile under other matchsticks. So like they painted one, let's say, and then like hit it and she could like and find it. Oh my gosh. In another experiment, she was observed to cause a ping pong ball to levitate for several seconds. But perhaps the most spectacular was when she was seated in front of a vat of saline solution, which hovered an egg floating okay. there just so you get it it's like saline there's an egg in it yeah okay. so cool Jean was confirmed to have with no physical touching whatsoever she was like intensely concentrated she was allegedly able to open the egg separate what? the yolk from the white as all these scientists were sitting there staring at her watching yeah. this even able to put the two halves back together again as if what yeah just the experiment was filmed, as almost all of her experiments were. Okay. So these displays of psychokinesis were found to have profound measurable effects on her heartbeat, brain waves, and her own electromagnetic field. Oh, I'm sure. And they also caused her discomfort and drained her both mentally and physically, even causing dramatic weight loss over a short period of time. Yet she was always willing to continue with these experiments. Oh, good for her. Other powers were also supposedly uncovered and tested by scientists, such as the ability to develop film that was kept in an envelope with her mind. No. To tell what color any object was without being able to see it, to magnetize or demagnetize objects, and to cause images to appear on paper. But, and this one is crazy, perhaps the most impressive of all was her ability to seemingly affect organic tissue and living cells. Indeed, it was this power that, lies at the center of one of her most famous and weirdest experiments. Oh, I can't wait. So the experiment was organized by scientist Dr. Gennady Sergeyev. Very well done. Who spent years studying this woman and running through countless tests, just like he wanted to know how this is happening. In the experiment, the still beating heart of a frog was placed in solution, and Kuljin was asked to see if she could influence it in any way with just with her mind. Okay. The outcome was better than anyone could have hoped for so as a psychic was allegedly able to speed up the heart slow it back down and with an incredible burst of con- concentration eerily make it stop altogether what later rumors would even claim that she would influence human hearts uh, but that was unconfirmed okay well i mean yeah as to how she did it sergeyev could speculate as she was drawing energy from the atmosphere around her and project it at the thing that she was focusing on. And he made electromagnetic readings that claimed to support this theory. So she could somehow harness the electromagnetic energy around her and just like... Which, I don't want to butt into your story, but maybe that's something you learn after death and that's how the spirits (gasps) commute. Doors open wide. All these amazing feats were starting to get out into the wild and international news before long, attracting scientists from overseas as well, who also seemed to be very impressed with all of her displays. No kidding. And she just always did it. Yeah. She was like, Oh, God, love her. In the meantime, Kulagina changed her name to Nelia Mikhailova in order to hide her real identity in the face of the increased scrutiny from the public. I'm sure. And throughout it, she said that she was always labeled by the real deal by nearly everyone who studied her. Right, right. There wasn't but everyone's like, you're full of it. The fucking haters. Of course, there were skeptics who waved it all away as illusion, sleight of hand, and trickery. But these experiments were consistently claimed to be under the most strict conditions, like science-y stuff. Yeah. And despite accusations of cheating, it has never been really proven that she was caught cheating or like using any sort of like sleight of hand. 
Um, indeed, one instance when she was accused of a fraud by a Soviet newspaper, Kuligenia won a, defam- a defamation case yes. against her, further Good. like backing her up. Yes. She, it it reminds me of, um, what's her name in American Horror Story? Carrie Fisher's daughter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Or no, is, is it her? Or is it the hippie? Are we talking about which season? Coven and Apocalypse. Yes, it was Billy Lord. Yeah, Billy Lord. How she yeah. can like that's I like that who girl. I see in my head. So, of course, there is a caveat. Yes, if you will. So the main problem with all of this is that it is solely based on reports coming out of the Soviet Union at a time when the Cold War was going on and there was much competition between the United States on every playing field. Did we have anything that was even close? So both governments were engaged with their own studies in psychophenomena at the time. So there seems to be a definite possibility that the stories of Kulagina's powers were exaggerated or maybe even completely fabricated. And and there's no really way to verify any of it, as all sources lead back to Soviet claims, often with murky details on how these supposed strict experiments, if you will, were carried out. And we are merely forced to just take their word for it. There's also the fact that despite the Soviet claiming that dozens of scientists examined her, including two Nobel laureates. Sure. Sure. um, There doesn't seem to be any official scientific paper ever published on her at all. Oh, that's weird. It is. Which seems odd for such a sensational, groundbreaking woman. Yeah. Yeah. There's also the fact that the videos for supposed demonstrations are grainy and indistinct, not really counting as hard evidence. Although Nina Kuligina was, without a doubt, like she was a real person. Yeah. There, there's just no way to, it's not like we have all these videos, we have all this paperwork. Right. Here it is. And that, that was going to be my question. I was going to wait till the end because usually you're yeah. just like, just wait for it about the videos. Yes. So whether she was the real deal or not, she stood by her claims for the rest of her life. And it has been said that she used her alleged abilities, and that may have been what led to her dying. Her supposed psychic abilities were said to be well-documented as taking a serious toll on her physical health, even causing a severe heart attack at one point in the 70s that almost killed her. Over the years, she continued various demonstrations and experiments, and she was often described as looking increasingly haggard and frail. And in 1990, she finally passed away at the age of 64, taking whatever secrets she had to the grave with her. So wow. was this all Soviet trickery or the evidence of just a very powerful psychic? But no matter what like what people think, this woman, like, she is very well known, like in yeah, I Russian can't believe history. I've not heard of her. And um but yeah, there's just like how will we ever solve like solve it? So my thoughts are if the Soviets were making this up. And yeah. Granted, you didn't live through the Cold War. It was weird. It was just weird. Um, I feel like she wouldn't have been like let in public, that they would have just made it up from the top to the bottom. Maybe this is because I want to see the best in people. Right. Lies. I see the worst in people. But I devil's advocate, if you will. I feel like that if if this was just to compete with the Americans, that – there, she wouldn't have ever been let yeah. out into. The well, public. I mean, there are a lot of pictures of her, like, with her hands, like, in a separated circle, if you will, with a ping pong ball in the middle of it. Oh. Um, like they're, they absolutely had her in rooms with a bunch of stuff around her, and like, obviously, if they're if the government is going to try to like fabricate something, they're going to go all out. Right. But like. It said she was a real person. She submitted these claims for the rest of her life. Yeah. So it's not even like here she is about to die and she saying like the government paid me off to do this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like deathbed confessions. Yeah. Interesting. I love that story. I, I never, I never even heard of her. No, me neither. Now I want to know all the stuff and all the yeah. things, and I'm pissed I don't get to meet her because she's <laughs> no longer with us. But I could see how, if that was a real thing, how it would just take a toll on her physically. Yeah. Not just mentally, Absolutely. but physically. Well, especially because, like they said, how much concentration, like how you could see her like pulling something. Yeah. And probably a lot of her own energy into it as well. Yeah. To move a couple matchsticks. 
Yeah, it's Absolutely. just crazy. Well, and I'm, I'm kind of going to stick behind. Maybe that's what happens when you pass over and yeah. you're able to move stuff with like your energy, and, the energy. S- and suck the energy in. And that's why K2s and all this like equipment react exactly. from. I'm just making energy. shit up, but it kind of makes good. sense. Yeah. <laughs> also, Nina Kulagina would be a great drag name. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can't wait to see pictures of her. I bet she was adorable or she was ginormous because in the in the 80s, you just thought right. every woman in Russia was just like a big, beefy woman. Okay. Miss so, Crunch Bolt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that German woman. But there's teeny tiny German no, women. Here, I'll there. show you a picture of her. She's... Oh, yes, please. Oh, she's beautiful, actually. It's like very... Average. Like average looking Average woman. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, well, good for her for living through that you know and just you know all the drama that i'm sure surrounded her life till the day she died as well is it real well i mean she changed her name yeah i feel you girl i feel you so my story is kind of hauntings in general and um with the use of such tech devices used these days to find proof of the paranormal you and I included in this clayton can the dead manipulate everyday devices we use to communicate with us like yeah when we're doing a spirit box session we're like they can manipulate these voices on this radio to say what they want you know with the even the portal app they're taking these voices that we hear them say the same thing every single location we're at yeah. and they change those words into something we've never heard that app say before just a couple of weeks ago in the middle of the night the tv in my bedroom turned on all by itself Prior to ferry. Do you have your Alexa device connected to your TV? No. Hmm. And, yep, creep me the fuck out. Not going to lie. Um, at first, I just assumed that either Chris had turned it on, maybe he couldn't sleep, or maybe he just touched it, or that maybe we left the remote in bed and rolled over on it. But no. And um, the remote was sitting on my bedside table. Is that usually where it is? Yes. Okay. And Chris just explained it off as, you know, what? oh, it was the sound bar and the sound bar sometimes. You know, and I bought into his bullshit because he's really good at spewing it when it calms me down. <laughs> um, Well, do you remember when the the Xbox in my house just would always turn oh, yeah. itself on? But yeah. it but it would always do it like while, when you could see it. It's, yeah. We never like went in the room and it was on. Like you'd be walking by the room and because the next box makes that sound yep. when it turns on and it would because you could see it as you're walking down the hall before you turn to go down the stairs and you'd be walking down the hall and it'd go. Bloop. Oh, wow. That's not, this is the first time anything like this has ever Ugh. happened to me. Now, when like the electricity goes out in the middle of the night, when the power turns back on, my bedroom light turns on. I don't know why. It's just I know it's going to happen. And but, that's it's, what... but it's a, a smart bulb, right? No, it's oh. not. It's always been that way. But Whoa. this TV's not hooked into that line or anything like that. Whoa. But that's what I thought had happened at first. I'm like, oh, shit, the power went out. And I'm like, nope, the TV's on. I kind of wish I would have paid attention to what was playing on the TV when it turned on. Because was it somebody from the other side trying to tell me something, blah, 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 blah. But I'll never know. Um, but it left me thinking. If spirits can manipulate, like I said, our spirit box, answer questions, and just ma- manipulate everyday. I- can they manipulate everyday items to do the same? Right. With so much on Google, I had to narrow down my search a bit, and I chose telephones. I mean, think about it. With phones, what they are, why can't the dead figure out a way to reach out via the one thing everyone has on their person nearly 24-7 yeah. to connect with their loved ones? Well, I found out they do. Oh. Yeah. And I'm about to tell you some stories I found on the internet from people who have been contacted by the dead via their telephone. And those stories go a little something like this. As crazy as it seems, the mystery of phone calls from the dead is not an uncommon one. Those who have researched the phenomenon have determined that these calls usually occur within the first 24 hours of death, which I thought was really fucking cool maybe you still remember how to use a phone but there have been cases in which the calls were received as long as two years after oh my gosh the call is usually filled with heavy static and the phantom caller's voice is faint and sounds really really far away little do we know how fucking far away they are on september 12th 2008 
when a Metrolink commuter train passing through the Chatworth District of Los Angeles collided with a freight train. One of its passengers, Charles E. Peck, died on impact at 4.22 p.m. that day, and 25 others also perished in their death of the crash. However, Peck's story didn't end there. For 11 hours, up until the point when rescue teams recovered his body, Peck's cell phone dialed out to a number of his what? different family members. Goosebumps! His fiance, his stepmother, his brother, his sister, and his son. All they heard when they answered was static, and returning the calls only went directly to his voicemail. The calls were, however, able to lead searchers to the location of Peck's body some 12 hours later, at which point they determined he had died on impact. Whoa. So it's not like he could have yeah. been dying and calling. An hour before they found him, the call stopped. Goosebumps. Although, strangely enough, they never did locate his cell phone. What? Yes. <laughs> I love that story. So, uh, another story. That's all I have on it. Yeah. Um, Catherine Ramsland of Psychology Today shared in 2013 that Dean Kuntz had been at his office that day when he re received an unexpected phone call. When he answered, a female voice that sounded far away spoke to him. But it only spoke three words. Please be careful. Kuntz Eerie. asked. Yeah. Well, Dean Kuntz, of all people. Right. <laughs> Kuntz asked who it was, but received no answer. Instead, the ghostly voice simply repeated its cryptic warning three times before fading to silence. Kuntz sat dumbfounded, listening intently to the now silent phone line, and he wondered, who could it have been? His number was unlisted, after all, and the voice sounded strangely like his mother's, but she had been dead almost two years. I don't, mm. ugh, that's weird. Perhaps his story wouldn't be worth mentioning if it were not for what happened two days later. Dean went to visit his father at the facility where he lived. The staff was dealing with Ray's behavioral problems. Ray is his father. Apparently, I didn't think that was worthy enough to put in there. And they had asked Dean to come and talk with him. Ray had punched another resident, a man on a walker, and the nurses were worried. <sighs> Dean was unaware that Ray had used some of his small allowance to buy a yellow-handled fishing knife and had honed it to razor sharpness and oiled the hinge to make it open like a switchblade. When Dean came into the room, Ray moved fast. He grabbed the knife from a drawer, and Dean had to try to wrestle it away from him. He just managed to avoid being stabbed. Wow. So, Mom, good job. Yeah. This one is just random guy named Leroy B. on some random forum. Leroy says, my husband lost his grandfather a long time ago, but just recently he has been experiencing something really weird. He has seen his grandfather's name on our caller ID. So we thought someone was calling from his grandfather's house. That was the first time and no one was even home. Just today for the second time, he was at work and clearly along with coworkers, he heard the phone ring. He answered it on the first ring, but only heard the dial tone. When he looked at the phone's directory, which has no caller ID, but it lists who he has called, he saw the grandfather's name again. Weird. Weird. And this is another one I found on random forum. It starts off with a very quick backstory. I guess I lost my sister this February 2, and it says in quotes, suicide. I put that in inverted commas because I still do not believe it was suicide for the fact that she left no explanation for anybody and more so, didn't tell me anything before. Being a year apart in age, me and her were extremely close. Now to this event, this morning that has me extremely rattled and upset. I was asleep in my bed with my girlfriend and was awakened by the phone ringing. It woke her up too. This is how I know I wasn't dreaming. It was 3.37 a.m. I know this because when it rang, I looked at the screen to see what number was calling me and saw the time. It was a private number or unknown number. Usually I don't answer private number calls, but being half asleep and guessing it was probably a drunk friend ringing to be picked up from somewhere, I answered. Probably the Good best friend. thing. Yeah. I said hello, 
and I could all I could hear was this muffled kind of static sounds. No one replied. So again, I said, hello. Again, no response. So I thought it was probably just a prank call or some shit and was about to hang up when I heard my name get called. Paul. It was clear as day and it sounded 100% like my sister. I kind of froze and started to panic and said her name a few times, pretty much pleading for it to be her. Then all I heard was, I'm sorry, I love you, please help me. The last bit is what made me really upset and uneasy, the please help me. I asked where she was, then I heard a really, really loud screeching sound, and then it went back to the dial tone. When it hung up, I turned to my girlfriend. She said my face was pale white, and she asked why I was saying my sister's name and what was wrong. And it's then that I had a complete meltdown. I cried harder than I ever had. I didn't go back to sleep, and I just sat up with my phone in my hand waiting for her to calm back. Today, I even took the day off work, and I've just been sitting with my phone. So this was after the fact, right? After the suicide, yeah. correct. Yeah. Beautiful, but heart-wrenching at the oh, same time. Oh, my god! I want to know updates. <laughs> um, also, receiving text messages from the dead is a thing as well. Yeah. I found this story from 303 Guy on random website forum. This text message was not typed by me and somehow got into the new message to my buddy by accident and got sent by accident. So it wasn't that he received the text. It was typed up in his, you know, the little area before you click send. I could not find where this information exists on my mobile, but must be a message I sent to someone in January last year. It was the information about his son's funeral, Denver, from one over one year ago. 303 guy searched his messages from a year ago and found nothing with the exact words as the text that was sent to his buddy. All of this happened while his phone was just sitting on his desk. He went to check a text message he had just received, and the funeral information for his son's wake was in the box, typed out, and ready to send. 303 guy attempted to clear the message and it sent anyway as he was typing up a new message so it doesn't make any sense how it got sent he had cleared it he was typing up a new message but yet it still went over 303 guy claims that he just so happened to have been thinking about his deceased son at the time and was this denver's way of letting his dad know he was okay i think so i like that i do too Let's see. So one more. This is another text message. Toffius is the name on random message board. Worked at one of the most popular funeral homes in his city while putting himself through college. His job wasn't preparing the corpses for the funeral, but rather working with the families of the deceased on planning the appropriate services for the loved ones. One day he welcomed a grieving mother and father in their mid-40s who were inquiring about a service for their late son. According to Taufius, he had been in a nasty car accident on the highway. His name was Bobby, and he was 19 at his time of passing. He took Bobby's parents on a tour of the funeral home while they talked about the kind of service they'd hold and what kinds of objects the parents wanted buried with their son. This isn't an unusual thing. Many people do this with deceased loved ones. When everything arrived, it included a baseball cap, a sports team hoodie, and his cell phone turned off. After his trying day at work, he went home, took a shower, and sat in front of the TV. At this point, his phone buzzed. He said, my iPhone beeps a text notification. I was somewhat surprised this text came from a number not saved in my contact list. It just read, hello, in all caps. A little weirded out, I responded, hey there, who is this? I began heading to my bedroom with the shut door, turned the TV on, and got into bed. I usually just watch a bit of TV before falling asleep. My phone beeps again. Bobby. All caps. Bobby who? I asked. I hadn't ever known anyone by this name. All caps. You know who I am. You met my parents today. I got a bit dizzy as I read it along with a rock settling in my stomach. There's no way that it's this kid, I thought to myself. I responded, this isn't funny. What happened to him was horrible, and no one should be joking around like this. The number responded, all caps, shut your rotten mouth. 
You let them ruin my funeral. Ruin it. It should have been you in the car accident, not me. You'll have an early grave too if it goes my way. Okay. I mean, I understand the kid's pissed. That's creepy. So creepy. I understand why he would be pissed. His life was cut short at such a young age. But, dude, chill out. Absolutely, unsurprisingly, um, Taufias quit his job at the funeral home shortly after this event, but not before some other crazy antics went down with Bobby. I need to know more. I need to know so much more. Hopefully, he calmed him down. Told him it was okay and go towards the light. So there you have it, kids. Do you have a story of the dead calling you or texting you? I want to hear about it. Me too. Right now. Um, Email us your stories at oddityfilescrew at gmail. My wingmen for this week are the Google, liveabout.com, intuitive-investigations.com, citydata.com, psychologytoday.com, distractify.com, and mysteriousuniverse.com, and all the message boards. (laughs) But That's crazy. Awesome. Yeah, I've never even thought about that. But I mean, it goes back to if we're talking about electromagnetic. Absolutely. Maybe they can manipulate something. Yeah. Which, I mean, this whole episode went full circle. The one where he got that call, though, in the middle of the night. I hate uh, uh, that. Ah, uh, I can't. Uh, like, I, that would mess you up forever. Ever. Ever. I, I would never want to answer my phone again. No. Every time my phone went off, I would be like, I would immediately call my psychic medium friend, Tiffy, Tiffany Rice, and say, what do I need to do now? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes is is that their way of reaching out and they want you to go True. to a psychic medium? I don't know. Crazy shit. So I actually have a listener story. Yay. The subject is weird dreams. Ooh, fun. It says, so I am only a recent fan. And honestly, I do love the supernatural and hearing stories of that nature, but never had much experience with ghosts or aliens. However, when thinking about something weird that I couldn't really explain, this came to mind. I love that they're like thinking of stories they might have. Yay! Whenever I had a dream when I was younger, sometimes it didn't mean much, but there would be times that would make me really believe that I could see what was going to happen. Oh. The first time, the dream was simple. Me at a pond with a fish with large teeth showing up, then a greasy paper bag shows up in my hand. And the dream ends. The next day, my dad tells me we were going fishing Ah. at a fishing farm that looks like a pond. There were fish in the pond with large teeth to keep the fish from overbreeding. Okay. Then afterwards, we went to McDonald's. The greasy paper. (laughs) There's more. I've also had dreams about working at places even before starting there. Little things like what the building looks like and what the kitchen area is. Which is not where it gets weird. The weird part is that every job I get hired at, I had a dream about feeling like I'd already been there. Where if I try to apply to a place where I didn't have a dream, I either don't get the job or I get fired soon after getting hired or it's just a terrible place to work. (laughs) I hope you guys can use this story for your podcast. Hopefully it's interesting enough for your listeners. Totally. Totally interesting enough. So I I, I have dreams like that where it's... Like the fish with the teeth, with the random stuff. And then throughout the next day, it just slowly unfolds. And and then it stops. And I'm like, but I, I thought something more exciting was supposed to happen right. after that. But is it deja vu? Am I really dreaming it? Right. Is it my brain misfiring? Which is probably the case. I don't know. But I, I feel her. I yeah, really do. Just like the whole bits and pieces thing kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. How about you? You ever have any weird dreams that come true? I don't think so. No. I mean... Of course, Do you remember a lot of your dreams? Yes. I don't. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I remember a lot of my dreams. There, I went through a phase, and it's funny because it was just not too long ago. I was talking to DJ Jimmy about it, wow. and I was like, I, I haven't remembered my dreams in a long time, like a couple months. And usually, like I have vivid dreams. Okay. But just recently, I would say within the past month, I almost every night. Oh, good. Yeah. Do do you ever like try to dissect them or anything? Yes. Yes and no. I think because I am such a vivid dreamer, I've gotten to the point where it's like, oh, well, that was weird. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, when something happens, like last night, um, I had a dream that, so this is scary because of how much we travel. Yeah. I can't tell you how many dreams I have about plane crashes. 
unacceptable, like, Clayton. I'm not kidding. I would say at least three a month. And last night. That's just your stress. That it last has to be. night, I had a dream that um, we were landing at a very, very small airport. And um, as we were landing, there was a plane on its side, like in the grassy area, like between two of the runways or a taxiway. Uh-huh. And it was literally getting like pulled out. But okay. it was like it had flipped over in like the aftermath. Um, and we landed like next to it. Yeah. But then like we taxied in and I just remember sitting on the right side of the plane looking out the window like at this Delta like smaller like connection plane on its wow. side getting like pulled out of the grassy area. What's comforting is that rarely do I have dreams where I'm in the plane crash. Oh, good. I have, I mean, I have those dreams, but most of my dreams, I'm, I'm experiencing a plane crash. Like I'm watching it. Okay. Or like I'm sitting in my car and a plane like crashes right in front of me. Or like, um, I mean, I have been in a couple where I'm in the plane, but most of them just seeing them. Yeah. Now, have you ever had the dream where you died? No. See, I've heard, oh, well, it, just a dream, yeah. not that it happened. I had heard that you can't dream that you die. Right, because it stops. I have dreamed that I died. Whoa. And I wake myself up. Maybe it was like the impact before I died, but I just wake myself up and like, oh, you're dreaming. Well, I'm able to do that. I think that, I mean, because in the ones where I've been in the plane, it's like right before we hit, I'll wake up. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But I've had people in our Facebook fan group say I had a dream, blah, 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 that I died. And I'm like, I thought this was always a thing. But I remember one specifically (laughs) dying right now. But I remember one specifically that I died. I don't know. Maybe it was a plane crash. But it was was pretty traumatic. And I woke up freaked the fuck out. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I did die. And I saw people coming to take care of me. Anywho, well, but I, I want to know more about that. Why can't people dream that they die? Does it mean that yeah. you die? Is it just a superstition? Is it stuff people say to make you feel better? I don't well, know. Well, and be, I think it's because I do have such vivid dreams. I will wake up like with the emotions from my dream mm-hmm. that sometimes will last like a day. Oh, that, yeah. That I'm just like, Still I can't get it out of my off. head or just like whatever emotion that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. There have been so many dreams that I've <laughs> I've dreamt that like, like DJ Jimmy and I had an argument. Oh, that was and the I, worst. And I wake up assuming like he's mad at me. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's a dream. With my ex-husband, I used to have dreams that he would cheat on me. And I'd be pissed at him for like three <laughs> days, even though that it was just a dream. But I was like, no, but I saw her. And the one dream I had of him cheating on me, he ended up marrying the girl that was in that dream. So Whoa. maybe it was a real thing. Anywho, yeah. I digress. You guys are the fucking best. Um, hit us up on all the socials at Please. Oddity Files, Facebook, Oddity Files, and then our our fan group on Facebook as well. Check out the show Please. on Amazon. Leave reviews everywhere. We got to get those haters to push down to the bottom. Yeah. And if you didn't know, we have a Patreon. And we um, we love all of our our subscribers. We do yes. have a couple that we need to shout out because they yes, are executive because producers. We're due. Let, we should mention each name twice. Doug Malden Locke. Doug Malden Locke. Ryan Hoke. And we can't forget Donald Blanchflower. Donald Blanchflower. Ryan Hoke. Doug Malden Locke. Got everybody's names right. Got everybody listed. You guys are amazing. Yep. They everybody. are our executive producers, if you will. So um, please, it doesn't matter. We have an option to give a dollar a month. The only yeah. reason we ask that is because we are completely independently funded and you know we want to keep making our material better for you like we were talking about how seasons one and two are a little eh but season three gets a lot better that's that's all we want to do guys we just want to put out the best possible material for you but we do need your help every now and then and since we're filming we're in the middle of filming season four um we could use a little boost absolutely and you get you get fun stuff yeah. for joining. Oh, absolutely. Um, we put all kinds of exclusive videos up there. I've been throwing up really old lost episodes from like way back 2012, 2011 or whenever the hell it is I started. So you definitely get entertained yes. for um, subscribing to our Patreon, which is patreon.com slash oddity files. But we appreciate all of you, even if you can't give anything. Yeah, we totally just get to it. help us spread the word. 
And Just we can't do this without you. Click that y'all. share button every now and then. Absolutely. But where does a new call? Goodbye. Ghost on. Oddity Files is an independent production. Intro music created by DJ Jimmy. Wah, wah. 2020 artwork created by me, Kitsy Duncan. The opinions expressed in this podcast are ours and ours alone. Well, maybe yours too. If you like the show and would like to support us, visit oddityfiles.com and click on support or go to patreon.com slash oddityfiles. Every little bit helps with both the podcast and the TV show. You can also support us by watching Oddity Files on Amazon Prime. It's free to Prime members and dirt cheap to those who aren't. You can find us on all the social media sites at Oddity Files. Keep spreading the word by sharing, retweeting, and reposting. Join our Oddity Files Facebook group by searching Oddity Files Fan Group and click join. We'll approve you as soon as we can. All weirdos are welcome. Not into that social media stuff? Tell your coworkers, family, even the weird guy who just won't stop talking to you in line for coffee. Oh, and grandma, your grandma will love us. We appreciate each and every one of you. And if it weren't for you, we have no idea what we would do with our lives. If you have a story you'd like to submit, send it on in at oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. Also, send in story ideas, silly, weird memes, or just positive vibes to oddityfilescrew at gmail.com. You can also call in and leave that in a voicemail. Call us at 317 300 6699. To contact us about an appearance, reach out at kitsy at oddityfiles.com. When you have a set, rate, review, and subscribe. We know it doesn't sound like much, but it really helps us get up there on the podcasting charts. And remember, kids, weird is the new cool. Ghost on. Um, why are you still here? Go on. Get out of here. Turn it off. It's done. Really? I swear. Go. Get. Serious. I'm out of here.